Good morning, traders and investors. Roger Scott here, Senior Strategist for WealthPress. Today is Thursday, June 22nd. Don't ask me where the week has gone. Now, it's about uh, 7.43 in the morning. The market's going to gear up to open up in a little less than two hours. Wanted to get this to you nice and early. Now, as you can see here, the Nasdaq's already down about 60 points. The Dow's down about 100 points. And I hate to say I told you so, but I told you that the market's about to take a big, big dump. And uh, it looks like it's maybe just getting started. Let me show you what I'm looking at. First of all, volatility is still on the lower end of the range and it still hasn't started going up. I mean, it went up 5% yesterday, but that's not enough. When this market really starts tanking, and I think it will in the near term, and I'll show you some, um, some support areas to look at if they break those levels, it's goodbye, Charlie. <laughs> Uh, anyhow, so expect volatility to rally. Now, looking at the, we don't need to be looking at the S&P right now. Looking at the XLK, which is the technology sector, as you could see, it came off of a two-day, and it's short-term oversold right now. If technology doesn't start getting it together today or tomorrow, it's going to be really bad. And this is the level you got to watch out for. Let me just give you a, a little target here. If technology starts trading below, this is XLK. If it starts trading below 163, 164, the party's over and we're going to go down to the base. And I think we actually are going to go there. If you look at ARC, this is Kathy Woods. She hasn't real. This is the, this is, I call this the degenerate trading sector or the degenerate trading index because these are just a bunch of degenerate stocks that people buy during the height of the bull market. And uh, as you can see here, she went from a value of 160 to 42 just like most small cap stocks. And she's right back down to the base as I predicted. But even she can't get out of this range. And right now, if you look at it, it looks very similar to what we're seeing with technology. Can't really move up past this level too much. Um, and you could see here, right here, the communication sector, same thing. So these stocks are not doing as, as investors thought, and I'm expecting more downside. For XLK, that range would be right here. I don't even have to draw a new line i could just extend this one right here at the 60 level so it's at 63 right now watch it and wait for it to break down xly same thing look at that it hit support major support excuse me resistance not support resistance on a weekly chart and look at where the rsi is it's curling right now so i think all of this is going to come back down which will cause the dow jones if you look at the dow right now notice how on a daily chart it went out the algos hit it i told you about this last week and now it's coming right back to the base and i'm expecting the same thing with industrial stocks so i just took you through the three major technology stocks uh communication technology and i guess i didn't show you consumer discretionary but you could trust me it's doing exactly the same thing there it is and look at the long-term chart right there so i think that Either, A, we're going to break out hard on these three sectors, communication, uh, uh, consumer discretionary, and technology, or we're going to continue moving lower. Now, here's the problem with the argument of moving higher. There's absolutely zero catalyst. Everything about AI in the short term is already known. Earnings, we don't have them really for another th two to three weeks, just the beginning end of it. So there's really no major catalyst and we're heading into the quietest period of the summer. See where I'm going with this? Aside from all the other technical stuff that I've been talking about. Bond market still looks firm and it looks like it's gonna break above this level and go up to the 105, 106 level. We had a close call yesterday, but I'm still bullish this, uh, this ETF. And if you're looking at the long bond, if you're looking at futures, it's the same thing. This is the long bond TLT. Anything over 10, 20, 30 year, this tracks it well. Now, again, as the market comes off, as all of these sectors come off, I'm expecting volatility to start moving higher. Here's the caveat. If they start moving slowly, and I don't think they will, usually when they sell off, they start selling off. We haven't really seen a major sell off. This is just, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. I'm talking about bars like this, like these bars moving down like this kind of a sell-off. When we have this kind of selling pressure, volatility is going to start spiking and I'm expecting volatility to come to go up to the, excuse me, to the $20 level. So something to pay attention to. Now, let's talk a little bit about market action and what we can expect later today. So first of all, we still have Mr. Jerome. Uh, my mouth are moving, therefore I'm lying, squirrely speaking, although he's toned it down quite a bit. He's speaking today at 10 a.m. again. He's not going to say anything really that bullish for the market. We have jobless claims at 830. 
Now, let's see what they're expecting. The moving average has been going up. So the, the moving average was about 200, then it went up to 220, then it went up to 240. Last number was near the 260. If this starts going closer to 300,000, 280, 290, and staying there, well, that's a third higher job, jobless claims than it was a year ago. So even though the number is still relatively low, uh, but you see here two weeks level that marked a significant shift higher. So again, if it stays here, if it starts cooling off, no one's gonna make a big deal out of it. But if it starts really moving to the 300,000 range, it's gonna become a problem. So he's speaking at 10, you've got the petroleum status report, you've got the jobless claims, which I just talked about, and you've got existing home sales. And I'll talk about that in a bit, but the market is set to open lower, and I'm not seeing uh, that bi-directional volatility that we were having two, three weeks ago. I think the uh, we're gonna lower rates party is over, and I think investors are, are finally getting the hint that the Fed is serious. And again, I blame Powell because he's been so iffy-washy. He hasn't been consistent. Finally, finally, after this uh, algo rally, he, he's starting to start seeing that things are, are, are moving a little bit too bullish and, and that's not good either because then they'll have to come down more. So he's starting to take a more conservative approach as the market is going higher. But nah, he's not a politician. Oh boy, don't get me started. So three major US benchmark indices yesterday ended the regular session lower as market participants digested renewed warning issued by Federal Reserve, squirrely Powell emphasizing the necessity of a further rate hike. And folks, it's 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 it was just a pause. And he said something. What we do and the rate that we do it at are completely two different things. That said a lot yesterday. I'm paraphrasing him, but but that said a lot. What he's saying is just because we don't raise rates consecutively, it doesn't mean we're done. You understand? So so get that out of your head. And and that's one of the reasons why technology went overbought. And I blame him for that. He should have been a little clearer. Don't get me started. <laughs> It's not a long road. Uh, Tesla plunged 5%. It was uh, downgraded. I talked about it yesterday. Chip stock retreated, including Qualcomm, one of the stocks that we currently have. Qu uh, FedEx transports didn't do well yesterday. So in his testimony, get ready for me and my commentary, U.S. House Financial Committee, Mr. Squirrely said, policymakers anticipate interest rates would need to be raised to moderate U.S. economic growth. Why couldn't he say that six weeks ago? Why couldn't he say that six weeks ago? Did anything really change? No. And contain inflationary pressure. Inflation pressure continues to run high. And the process of getting inflation back down to 2% has a long ways to go. Yes, he's finally coming to, coming to it. The central, central bank leader told U.S. lawmakers on Wednesday. In addition, Powell said it might make sense for the Federal Reserve to raise rates at a more moderate pace than it has in the past 15 months. Yes, I agree. You don't have to go 10 for 10. Do one, see how it goes, spread it out. But my point here is we're not done. We're not even, we're just getting started, okay? I, I'm not kidding. Meanwhile, uh, Goolsby, this guy was around when uh, we really took a dump in the early 2000s. So I, I wanted to hear what he has to say. I made an effort of it, of bringing his name up yesterday. And he says, uh, emphasize the need for the U.S. Central Bank to do more sniffing on the economy and inflation before deciding whether to resume in hiking interest rates. I have not decided what should be the rate decision more than a month from now. What he's saying is we don't know. We need to figure out what's going on. And I think that a lot of it has to do with just pausing and waiting to see how what they've done impacts the economy. And it's not an instant. It's not, a, it's not instant efficiency, okay? The markets are not as efficient as you may believe they are. Now we're, we're pricing in about a 72% probability of a 0.25 basis point rate hike. I think this number may go up to about half and then it'll go higher, but I don't think it's gonna be like last time where it goes to 30%, 70%, 20%, 80%. It was all over the place because of Powell and the way he speaks and the way and, and how he conditions folks. Again, don't get me started. Today we're gonna be looking at US home sales and jobless claims. We're looking at 262. I'm hoping that the number's lower. Jobless, I mean, home sales have been pretty steady. Uh, U.S. crude oil inventories. I'm looking to see how negative news impacts crude oil because crude oil is not bouncing back as fast as it used to, and I warned you about that. In Europe, we're looking at losers in banking, automobile, technology stocks. Uh, kind of looking like it's leading the overall market lower. I was going to say that's pretty broad. Financial, automobile, and technology, that's like three out of six. Bank of England is scheduled to announce its interest rate decision with a rate hike widely anticipated. If they don't do it or do it too much, that may impact U.S. economy overnight. Uh, no real news about ch uh, China today. No news is good news, right? 
<laughs> wink, wink. Japan uh, closed lower today, tracking overnight declines on Wall Street after Powell flagged the potential for more interest rate hikes. I told you this was going to happen. And uh, Alcoa had negative news. They were downgraded. We've got earnings on Darden restaurants. The restaurants have been doing pretty good. And Fact Set is also... Those are the big ones. Darden, that may impact other restaurants or consumer staples. Keep an eye on that. And Fact Set. Now, and Smith & Wesson. I forgot about Smith & Wesson. It'll be interesting to see how Smith & Wesson... I'm curious to see how it's doing now that COVID is kind of behind us. If people are still buying guns at a major clip or not, they were really going crazy for a while there. Now, today is Thursday, and Thursday I talk about my favorite sector. Now, this is going to get really interesting. Let's go into my scans and we can go see exactly what's going on here so as you can see here financials are taking a little breather i think they're going to be coming down with the dow energy i'm not so confident about the energy sector right now industrial got to be careful because that's moving along with the dow technology two more down days and we're toast basic materials is doing exactly what industrial stocks are doing honestly between you and me I like utilities and I like healthcare. Healthcare, healthcare, healthcare. Healthcare is very defensive right now. Um, so I would be looking at healthcare or I would be looking at consumer staples. Probably healthcare because we've got some consumer data this week. So healthcare is probably the most um, neutral, neutral ETF right now. You want neutrality right now. And if you want me to be honest with you, I would actually short uh, the Dow right now or the NASDAQ or I would be flat. But if you want to, if you want to uh, speculate right now, you've got a nice little, nice little symmetrical triangle. I'm hoping it'll break out to the upside. My suggestion would be right now to buy something expiring in about 57 days. Don't give it more than three weeks. If it doesn't go your way, if, if it breaks down, just get out. If you see a breakdown to the downside, us taking us to the 123 level right here, just get out. But if it starts going up to 140, that's positive news. But XLV is the only thing I can responsibly give you that's safe right now. You want to go 57 days. If it gets to about 40 days and no soup, just get out. And uh, you would go to the 132 strike price, maybe 133 strike price. Don't go too far out of the money, 132 or 133. And uh, you have my permission to, if you're going to go 132 or 133, don't hedge it with anything. There's just not enough volatility. I was going to say, if you're going to go with 132, you can hedge it with 136. But if you look at, let's see where the resistance area is. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't do that. I would just leave it alone right now. But if you really, really want to spread it, if you really, really want to spread it, do the following. Do a calendar. Sell the 230, the 133, no, the 132. Sell the 132. You'll probably get about uh, 75 cents for it. And then go to 721 and buy the 132. You'll probably end up getting it for a buck. It's a nice calendar spread, and I don't think we're going anywhere anytime soon, so this way at least offset your cost. So you're selling the 77, excuse me, you're selling the 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 630 expiration. No, no, I got it wrong. Hold on. You're selling the 77 expiration, 130 130, let's see here. 133 strike price right here right here 133 77 expiration you're selling and then you're going to go to 721 or even further up and you're going to get the 133 for uh the two weeks out so you want to sell the option that's expiring on the 7th and you want to buy one that's expiring on 721 728 or 718 same strike price go with the 133 it'll save you money It'll save you money, all right? Now, before I let you go, boy, this was a good one. Guys, I've done it again, and it's time. I've really done it. I've discovered one pattern, one pattern that's boasted a 100% win rate on dozens of stock. Yes, you heard it right. 100% win rate on 146 stocks, to be exact, over the last five years. The one pattern is so powerful, but the sad thing is most traders have never heard of it. And I cannot wait, I cannot wait for you not to only see this one pattern for free, but the other stocks that it's triggered on. So I put together a 45-minute in-depth training session to teach you how to apply this pattern to your own trading. And today, you get it for free. Follow the link below this video to unlock this trading class. If you're watching on YouTube, go to the WealthPress channel and 
watch it under the video the link is under the video like our channel subscribe to our channel and post comments on telegram channel if you want to subscribe to telegram you get instant alerts it's all instant all our news everything rogerscott.com forward slash telegram i'll see you guys soon take care and have a great day bye